In this lesson, we're going to add keyboard input to the game so the player can move around by using the WASD keys. There are several different ways you can do this. I'm going to do it a way that's kind of simple, but it does introduce some new things, in particular delegates. We'll start by opening Visual Studio and going into mainwindow.xaml. Up at the top on line 11, we're going to add this new attribute to the Windows tag. And it's key down equals main window underscore on key down. This is an event handler. So anytime a user presses a key, the key goes down within the window, then it's going to call this function. This is a lot like the click event handler that we set up for the buttons, where we say click equals whatever function to run. Now we're saying key down equals this function to run. The next step is to go into mainwindow.xaml.cs and we need to add three new using statements up at the top. I've got using system, using system.collections.generic, and using system.windows.input. These are the namespaces that have some of the new objects we're going to be using. Next on lines 18 and 19, we're going to add a new private variable called underscore user input actions. And this uses the three new things that we had to add the namespaces for. It's a dictionary object, and we're going to store the key value, which in this case means the key press, and we're going to store an action. And this is the delegate, which is the function we're going to run. So I'm going to explain some of this in some different code so you don't have everything all at once. And we'll start with a dictionary. A dictionary is a special type of collection. We have uh, collections and lists elsewhere in the program, like in our factories where we hold the list of the monsters and the list of the game items. This dictionary is a special list that has two values that it holds. In this case, I'm saying the dictionary has an integer and a string. And the first value is the key, and the second is the actual value. Now, if you think of a real-life dictionary, you have a word and its description. And that's kind of like how the dictionary object works. The word is the key, and the description is the value. In this case, the key is going to be the integer. So we're going to store some, some entries in this dictionary, and the, the key that we're going to look up on is an integer value. And the value that we want to use is going to be a string. So if we look at these next three lines where I'm adding some values to the underscore integer names dictionary, we see I'm adding a key of a number one, and the value is a string of the word one. We do the same with two and three. Then when we want to get the value, we can say in the dictionary, do a left square bracket and then put in the key that we're looking for. In this case, I have the number one and then a right square bracket. And this whole underscore integer names bracket one bracket returns the value that it finds for this entry. And it returns that as a result. And I've got a console right here so we can just see the output down here. And when I run it, we see that the result is one. If I change the key to the number three and run it, we see the result is three. So this is saying in the dictionary, find the key of three and return its value. And that's being stored in result, which is what we're displaying. Now for our code, our dictionary is going to store as its index, as its key, we're going to store what key was pressed. In this case, the it's kind of confusing because we're storing a key as the key, but this key here is the key that was pressed. So if you press the letter W on the keyboard, this is a W. And the value for the dictionary entry is going to be the action, the function we want to perform. So we're going to fill this up with something like W, we want to run move north. 
A, when the key press is A, we want to run move west. And that's what our dictionary is going to hold. It's going to hold what key was pressed and what function do we want to run. Inside our main window function on line 25, I call the new function initialize user input actions. This is the function where we're going to populate this underscore user input actions dictionary. And if we go down to line lines 82 through 90, we have the initialize function. You'll see here in the dictionary, I'm saying add, and our key for the dictionary entry is the key press W, the letter W. That's going to be our index. So when we look at the user input, we're going to say what key was pressed. If the key was W, then we want to run this action. And if you're not familiar with delegates, this might look a little strange. So I'm going to try to explain this in a few steps and make it as clear as possible. But realize that this is one of those things that you may need to look at a couple times before you really understand it completely. So I'll break down this delegate code. What we have at the beginning is an open parenthesis and a closed parenthesis. This would be a list of parameters that we need to pass into the function we're going to run. Now for this example, for our move north, move west, our attack, and our use current consumable functions, we don't need to pass in any parameters. But we still need to say, open parenthesis, close parenthesis, here's our parameter list, but it happens in this case there are no parameters. We're not passing any in. If we did need to pass in parameters, then we might put in x comma y. So that would say we're passing two parameters into our function. But that's not the case we're using here, so I'll get rid of that. This equal sign and the greater than sign is the lambda expression. And then here on the right is the code we want to run. In this case for the w, we want to run move north. When the user presses a, we want to run move west. And right now, in the dictionary, all we're storing is kind of the pointer to this function. So later on, we can say, look up in the dictionary, the letter W, what function do we want to run? And then we're going to say, go ahead and run that function. Just so you're a little more familiar with delegates, I'll show you how one looks if we did need to pass in parameters. So here's our dictionary definition. And we're saying, String is our key for the dictionary. And instead of just having action, we say action less than int comma int greater than. So that's saying this action takes two parameters and they're both integers. In our code, we just have the word action because we're not passing in any parameters. But in this test code, we've got to add the less than int int greater than because that's the list of the parameters that we are going to pass in for these actions. And you'll only need to declare the data type for the parameters. You don't need to declare any parameter name here. All it knows is it's going to get into integers and it doesn't care what the names of the parameters are. So here when we add to our action dictionary, we're adding our key value something, which is a string in this case. And then our delegate is this expression. So notice since we, our action takes in two parameters, we have to have two parameters in the parameter list. And we can name them whatever we want. The name only matters for the code on the right. So whatever we pass in is our first parameter. Here we're going to call it first, and in the code that we run, we're going to pass it in for the first value. And whatever the second parameter is, we're going to pass it in as the second parameter. And if we look at our do something function down here, notice the parameters are called X and Y. So our names don't have to match where we set up the delegate. The name here does not have to match the name in the function, but it does have to match the name in our parameter list for the whole delegate expression. 
The next line is the same type of thing. I've got uh, another dictionary entry for something else is the key. And here we're going to call a different function, do something else. The next line, we're adding a bit more code to the delegate. Our first two, we just have one function that we're calling. But in this third one with something special, we're saying we want to run a whole block of code. And we're doing that by having an open curly brace and a closed curly brace. So we can put multiple lines in between those curly braces. In this case, we're saying for the something special entry, the value should call the special function, and then it should call do something passing in X and Y, the two parameters that we defined in the delegates parameter list. So with these three actions add lines, we've filled our dictionary with three entries that have their keys and the functions we want to run when we get the value for that dictionary entry, which we're going to do down on this last line of the function, underscore actions, and we say open bracket something, close bracket, so this will look up in the actions dictionary and find the entry that has the key of something, this first one here. And then we say dot invoke three comma four. The dot invoke says run this delegate, run this action, and pass in the numbers three and four as the parameters. So I'll go back to our code and go down to the main window on key down function. This is the one that the event handler that the UI is looking for. And this is on lines 92 to 98. It has the sender, the object, and key event args. So this E is going to have information about the event, the key press event. We're going to look in the user input actions dictionary and see if it contains the key of E.key. So e.key here is going to be the letter W or the letter A, or maybe the letter O. They press, the user presses a, a key that we don't understand. We're going to see if we have an entry that contains the key that was pressed. So that's our key W, key A, S, D, Z, or C. If they do have that entry, then we're going to get the value, the delegate, so in this case, game session move north, and we're going to invoke it. We're going to say run that function. That's all the setup we need to do in mainwindow.xaml.cs. We do need to make a few changes to the game session class. In our movement functions like move north, we already have some guard clauses. Before we try to move north, we check to make sure that the player actually has a location to the north. Same with moving east, south, or west. But we don't have that for attack the current monster or for use current consumable. That's because we were controlling that by hiding or showing the buttons. But now that the player can use a, the keyboard to try to attack the current monster with the Z key or use the current consumable with the C key, we need to put a guard clause in here to make sure that they're actually at a location with a monster or that they actually have a current consumable selected. So for attack current monster, I added lines 250 to 253. It says if current monster equals null, just return. Don't try running the rest of the code. And for the use current consumable, I just put a if statement on lines 276 and 279 around the current player dot use current consumable where we check to make sure that current consumable is not equal to null. I could have checked to see if it is null and do a return like I do with the current monster, but there was only one line in the use current consumable function, so I just wrapped it with the if. Now I'm going to set a breakpoint in the main window key down function so you can see how it actually works when we run this. Press F5, and now to move north, I'm going to press the W key instead of clicking on the north button with my mouse. 
So that raised the key down event. We look here and see that the key, the argument, the event args that was passed in, the key is the letter W. And we look to see if the user input actions contain something where the key is W. And that's going to be the first entry. So it does find it and it goes in here. It gets the value for the key press of W, which is going to be the game session move north function, and it invokes it. It runs it. So now we have the ability for the player to move by using the keyboard. If you're watching the video on YouTube, there'll be a link in the description to the support page. You can get all the, all the source code there, or if you have any questions, you can leave a question there, and I'll answer them as soon as possible.